Okay, so I think uh, that's a great way for you to segue into the next part of your presentation. And um, uh, you're going to be talking now much more about complexity. Well, five minutes anyway. Now I'm, uh, uh, I'm talking about complexity and I think that you have already heard about complexity and attribution issues and I'm just going to take a couple of practical uh, experience that I, when I discuss with uh, senior colleagues and uh, experts working in climate change and broader development agenda. Now the biggest issue that we have is uh, what is development and what is adaptation? Are they separate? or they, uh, they do exist in uh, continuum, or that's the adaptation is within development. That kind of debate, that kind of conceptual debate uh, that we have seen, and people say that, oh, this is not adaptation, or this is adaptation. I mean, that kind of issues are always there. And I mean, it's again very difficult to identify that the, the adaptation issues. Like, like just uh, I want to give some example that the people they have autonomously uh, taken, you know, that's the, uh, we can say that the autonomous adaptation, like migration issue. Nepal, in Nepal that you can see a lot of migration, youth migration from outside. Is it related to adaptation? I mean that you can see, uh, you, 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 can, you can link with the adaptive climate change also because people, they, they cannot grow their, uh, I mean, crop and they need to go to, uh, they need to earn from off-farm activities and what is the, the safest way to get the uh, off-farm activities is migration. That migration can be at the uh, city area or outside. And we have also other several issues like uh, this uh, community forest users groups and uh, I mean uh, this irrigation users groups. I mean that if you see the broader uh, broader perspective, I mean that's the, the it's very difficult to say that uh, okay this is very specific to climate change adaptations and uh, uh, this is not. Now again this the the, the complexity that we have that how to uh, start from investment to uh, impact this uh, this attribution issues that we have already discussed this is very uh, important issues for evaluator that how we place these attribution issues in climate change adaptations and we also discuss about this robust methods uh, we we actually that we do not have robust method even to evaluate all the simple simple kind of development activities i mean we do not have i mean we do have but uh, if you link with the climate change adaptation it's very uh, difficult that we do not have some of the conceptual issues that uh, that emerge like adaptive uh, capacity that how we define adaptive capacity and how we talk about transformative change like pvc are talk, uh, talking about transformative change and resilience that what is transformative change we, we discussed a uh, uh, couple of weeks about the, to know more about this transformative, uh, transformative, transformative uh, change and resilience. And that kind of, that how to, how to bring that, that kind of uh, conceptual frame into evaluation is very, uh, very tricky. Now, again, that's the, the, the another, another issue is more, more in terms of, uh, uh, you know, this how we approach this uh, climate change adaptation, that we can see that the two school of thought, that one, one school of thought is saying that, oh, this is very, I mean, uh, this very complex and there are lots of issues related to attribution, some certainty kind of things, that's why we need rigor, I mean, that we need to have, um, adaptation uh, um, evaluation systems uh, with uh, very rigorous uh, uh, instrument and that th those people they are talking about uh, preferring that uh, that school of thought is they are talking about accountability oh we need to report back to our higher authorities or we also need to show the effectiveness of the project and we also show some sort of performance at the community level whereas that the People, the second second group of people saying that, oh no, you are not you you are talking about very small part of the whole whole system. That's why you, uh, you 
when, when if you talk about sustainability, uncertainty, that's complexity. I mean, it's it's, it's a waste of waste of time and resources. Why should you go in that kind of things? And why not you change only the uh, positive changes or the negative changes that you uh, you can you can see after the process? I mean, that kind of debate that we realize when talking to experts and uh, senior officers. And this. Again, that's another important issue is complexity. Some, sometimes people they talk when we heard about when we talk about complexity, they always take that the complexity is always negative term. But is it really negative? Is there? I mean, that's something that we can harness from the uh, complexity, like flexibility and plurality issues within the complexity. And I think that we need to dig out a little bit more on that. Then. This how uh, the, the basic issue is that how to how to address the human vulnerability. It's, it can be uh, climate change related or social uh, or other socio-economic drivers or maybe that the other environmental issues. I mean that the, the main important issue is the addressing the vulnerability issues and we have institution capacity and knowledge deficit that is also creating uh, big problems and. There has been some uh, positive changes also. I mean, that's the participatory monitoring and evaluation result based framework that the government has also initiated in Nepal, and the projects are also following, and projects and programs they have also very good participatory and uh, result based monitoring framework. But they are basically fragmented and they are not adequate. Now the, the now the issue is that the whether we should go on that debating again and again whether we need this or that. But the the major issue that uh, that was concluded was okay we can discuss but we need a practical uh, practical kind of uh, methods. That's why we can see the cascade of the complexity and that the basically when you see that the in our livelihood that when we talk about myself and my society there are basically three elements that we can categorize one climate another is actor lots of stakeholders there and the system whole policy institution kind of things sometimes you can see that they are not going in the same direction i mean that how we can bring them in the same direction so that i mean that we can really uh, show some some of the differences you know that's why uh, now this we, we we do not only make this as an academic exercise, but make it in more uh, practical way. Now some some of the some of the initiative they have uh, the government and the project that I mentioned earlier the PBCR and CDK and they have also initiated. They have taken due diligence issues while developing project. They use the existing mechanism, national and sectoral level mechanism. They also. Uh, they are also saying that okay, this is in the new, uh, new this new paradigm is coming. That's why we focus on the continuous uh, continuous way that we learn from that. We capacitate the actors and the the expert on on this area. Then complexity, uh, this we, they follow the complexity, this flexibility and program approach, and uh, and and basically this blending this uh, quantitative and qualitative doing uh, case studies and uh, most significant changes, major changes that we have in qualitative, uh, uh, qualitative research paradigm. That's why these are uh, the uh, efforts being made, but they are not adequate and explicitly mentioned in those programs. I think very, uh, just uh, last slides, that's the, there are multiple drivers and uh, but there is no fixed model that we have to understand that. But we need to understand this whether we should uh, still debate on adaptation and uh, development or we need to find the complementary on that. And continuous assessment, learning is very important and this is still, uh, this is emerging science and we need to learn more on that. Thank you very much. that direction and talk more about complexity. Uh, we have Albert from uh, yes. Stockholm Environment Institute. Thank you. Good afternoon. I think it's not a time for adaptation because what will be holding your lunch will be myself. So I hope your stomach will be grumbling for too long. Um, basically, uh, the I titled my presentation, How Shall Complexity Be Addressed in m &E? of climate change adaptation action. The reason I asked that question because I didn't know the answer myself, so I'm hoping that you would be able to uh, illuminate that to, to me. 
Um, in, in a number of uh, presentations, I think it's been shown the issue of scale in adaptation. And it's also been shown that sort of the typologies of adaptation, you've got soft options, you've got hard options, you've got backward-looking adaptations, you've got forward-looking adaptations, you've got autonomous adaptations, you've got planned adaptations. So what I will, I will, I will present is basically an aspect of, um, maybe you can say it's largely um, planned adaptation with some elements also of uh, autonomous adaptation. So basically this is a program. I will describe to a program that just ended in 2012 and what have been my, my reflections being involved in that program. And this program, a number of the partners in that program also are, are here, Sea Change, Care International and other, and other colleagues are here. It was called the Regional Climate Change Adaptation Knowledge Platform and it ran from 2009 to 2012. Uh, so, um, it has three components basically, uh, the, it has a knowledge sharing, um, it has also about scoping adaptation as, uh, priorities and it has also action on the ground. And in fact, the, we have held uh, twice now the Asia Pacific Adaptation Forum and the third one is going to be in, in, in Korea. And uh, these are the countries involved in, 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 in that program. So we have uh, South Asia, we have Southeast Asia, and then we have also countries in, in the Mekong in particular. And then we have pilot action in Nepal, Bangladesh, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. So essentially this is the whole structure of the program. But uh, in the interest of time, I'll just go straight to what we tried to do in that program. So we, our goal was to facilitate climate change adaptation in Asia at local, national, and regional levels and strengthen adaptive capacity. Bear in mind that at that time when it was conceptualized, it was sort of um, among the earlier major programs for the region on, on climate change adaptation. And then the purpose was to establish a regional and nationally owned mechanisms uh, that facilitates the integration of climate change adaptation into development planning. It's quite uh, but quite an uh, ambitious uh, purpose and goal. And I think it was that ambition also that has really sort of uh, created that, that problem in terms of del delivering the impacts that, that, that we were expecting. So what were the expected outcomes? Um, that climate change adaptation policies and strategies are able to address uncertainties. So again, a huge buzzword, uncertainties in the context of reducing vulnerable vulnerability and strengthening the resilience of the poor and the most vulnerable. And then planning and investments for national development and poverty reduction includes actions to adapt to climate change. And then potential impacts of uh, negative impacts of climate change and local development uh, reduced. Uh, local development actions become more effective in reducing vulnerability. Vulnerabilities to climate change Adaptation impacts reduced, local adaptation initiatives stimulated, strengthened by external agencies. So it's quite a lot, it's a very ambitious program. And when we did our, our, our sort of a mini evaluation of that program, these are some of the most significant change. So partners reported that they had learned new skills, they gained new insights, they had a change in perspective, developed awareness, the stakeholders were convinced of climate change impacts and then they gained deeper insights and then it led to further action. But this is, at the end of the program, this is what we have achieved, <coughs> we have received in terms of one of the key um, evaluation that we've done. AKP, the Adaptation Knowledge Platform, has delivered very good activities and outputs but unfortunately less so and measurable outcomes and concrete results. So this sort of, this got us to think what really happened in the process when we, we know we've done a lot of things, but still at the end of it, um, it was really hard to account for the outcomes. And one of the things that actually we, we realized is that a lot of the conceptualizations, for example, when you look at adaptive capacities, if you problematize that, what is essentially adaptive capacities? How do you evaluate adaptive capacities? How do you factor in time in looking at adaptive capacities? And 
Second is, for example, within adaptive capacities, within the whole process of autonomous adaptation, there is a whole range of social learning. How do you evaluate social learning? So these are the questions that um, sort of prompted me to think about our experience in the adaptation knowledge platform. So one, how do you monitor and evaluate outcomes that are beyond the lifetime of the project and are not necessarily quantitative? Again, the same theme repeated all over again by the previous presenters. Second, which m &A framework offers the best potential to address complexity? What have been the experience so far? How can we claim, what, what can we claim as, uh, as the state of the art or, or we say, we say uh, best practice? Do these experiences inform the planning of future adaptation projects? So have, have they been used in implementation? And what is the role for alternative frameworks such as most significant change in outcome mapping? So basically, I'm, I'm, I'm asking questions based on the reflection on a program which we have just implemented. And we feel it's, it's quite a reasonably huge program with so many partners involved, with substantial amount of donor money involved. And at the end of the day, within the lifetime of the program as required by the donor, we haven't actually been seen as having achieved the outcomes that we were expecting. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, I'm going to now request uh, my co-chair to come and talk uh, a little bit about the format of uh, group work. And I'm sorry, we can't take questions now, but I'm hoping that we have some chance for discussion after you come back from your group work. Okay. Well, thank you to all the panelists for very mm. stimulating presentations. And what we'd like to do now is turn it over to you guys um, and give you a chance to have a conversation in the groups that you're sitting in, at the tables that you're sitting. And so we have a question up, which is that understanding that climate change adaptation, monitoring and evaluation must account for complexity, which is what we've been discussing. Are there any approaches and ideas you have from your own experience or from what you've heard this morning that might help address the complexity and issues, like for example, the ones that Albert and other presenters just talked about, okay? So what we would like you to do in terms of process for this, unfortunately because of, of our time constraint, we're gonna give you 10 minutes in your groups to reflect upon your own experiences and what you've heard this morning and try to answer this question, okay? So what we're looking about, um, sorry, what we're looking for here is ideas or experiences that you have in, in potential frameworks that can help us address complexity. Okay, and when we, when we talk about complexity, um, this morning we've heard that it's about having multiple stakeholders, it's about uncertainties, it's about emergent processes, right? It's about having long causal pathways and um, long impact pathways, okay? So if you take 10 minutes, please, to discuss this in your groups. Now you're self-organizing, so there's no facilitators. Um, and there are some cards that you'll find on each of the tables. And we ask that you please capture the main points of your discussion. There's only a few, there's only a few cards on each table so that we, um, we can keep it to a, a man manageable quantity. And we will be collecting all of them after after we've finished. And what we'll ask you to do, right, um, after you've had your 10 minutes of conversation, is for those of you who wish to share what you've got on your cards or what the main points of your discussion were, right? And Dennis, of course, uh, will, will do some synthesizing of this and we'll feed it back to you through the Sea Change um, website, okay? So. Yes, yeah, yeah. So once we're finished with the, with the conversations, we'll have a few minutes to, um, to bring back into the plenary. Yeah, and hopefully some of the already stimulating questions from this morning, um, from, from earlier about contribution versus attribution might come into those, those discussions. Okay? And please I invite the panelists to join one of the tables um, of your choice and join in the is this clear? Does it make sense? Yep. Okay. Did you run away? <laughs> I have to quickly speak to the chairs.
there to come from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where do you start? <laughs> Brainstorming, I think, just, yeah. you know, I think the question is, you know, what, what ideas that can help to address the complexity? Okay. <laughs> Based on your experience, reflection, anything? That well, I, I think the, the contribution, I think one is our inten intentionality of design. So if we have, have um, causal pathways that are identified in the design, it becomes, in, it becomes easier to, to then ar articulate the contribution as well. But if, if, so if the design, uh, if, if the results that you see are in accordance with the expected, you know, in terms of the design, then, then we know that it's easier to, you know, at least we are talking a little bit about the individual problem, and then we can start to, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really maybe more a reductionist way of looking at it. I mean, complexity, you know, you can have something happening and things just explode, kind of, and it's very hard to contain it. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. So, I think the space what you can say. Again, what measure? Articulating the goals of man, unless uh, the elevators are because the complexity that uh, they were talking about seems to me many things are not being understood. Transformative changes, adaptive capacity, resilience, uh, kind of ambiguous. So you're measuring, you don't know what to measure, you don't understand what to measure. Then, uh, you know, at least that's a case in time. Understanding because this is what makes us a project theory of change, that's the theory of change or the culture of something. What kind of change is interesting about that? Yeah, yeah. What's the stuff? What's the work? My friend has a name. Sanjay, Sanjay, Sanjay. Sanjay. It's around a group of autonomous behavior of individuals in that group and behavior together. One of the things around fight or burns or autonomous, but yet there is something going on which makes them behave in a coordinated manner. It's exactly sort of what is emerging from the complexity. Is it actually generative or is it or is it actually of course, you know, um, the evaluation is around the design of the process. Uh, what are you recording? Keep video so, uh, uh, you don't speak Nepali? Uh, sorry, are you the technician? Uh, uh, you, you're a participant. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Where are you from? You look very Nepal. Uh, okay. Welcome to Nepal. I hope you are you're enjoying a good time. Okay. Uh, I don't speak Nepali. Nepali or Bengali. Nepali or Bengali. Nepali or Bengali. Don't speak Nepali or Bengali. Because people will think you are Nepali. 
Sorry. I, I was just wondering whether uh, they had a video recording looking for that.
ladies and gentlemen. Um, ten minutes in Nepal go really fast, it seems. Um, could you wrap up the, uh, the discussion or at least summarize your needed index cards in the next two minutes? Uh, what all the conclusions are in your opinion? Because there's a discussion. And uh, if there are any approaches or ideas that you want to bring forward, then uh, we will take it from the group stage from to get feedback
It's, it will have to decide first the boundary relations, or let's say, uh, to make it more objective, terms of reference for evaluation should be very clear so that we can reduce the complexity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, three very, very interesting points. Who else would like to share? Okay. The microphone is coming your way. Yes.
the community facilitation, uh, community action plan is done there. If the information you receive of the outcome, if the people understand the outcome of the project by themselves, it would, would be much easier for us, for everyone, to track on the process of your projects. We also agree on the, the la local language that we use, how the language that we use in terms of the uh, Ebony platform that you produce and you transform the knowledge that you have at the, uh, the organizational level that transform into a community level, how those knowledge is agreed and understood by them. Okay, thank you very much and thank you everybody for engaging in the discussions in your groups. Um, the ones that I also managed to hear as I was walking around, it, it, they sounded as though they were very um, interesting. So what we will do is we'll collect all of your cards and we'll do a little bit of synthesis and put a summary of that on, on the Seed Change website for everybody. Um, so thank you very much. And I'm going to hand it back over to Joe now. To, um, to wrap this up. Thank you. Um, Dennis, uh, okay. um, my question. So um, I have the dubious restriction of, uh, of being asked to close this very dynamic session where there are lots and lots of questions that were raised, but from um, my perspective, very few answers. Okay. So let me try and quickly. Um, throw out one or two very uh, somewhat provocative ideas and then leave you there. Uh, well, then you always tell us that. Okay. A um, hundred years ago, uh, when, um, when we were thinking about, well, when the, the discipline of medical science was not advanced at all, and the plague and the cholera were inflicting uh, the entire world, um, and disease theory and germ theory hadn't been developed. Uh, a lot of a lot of questions were arising as to, well, how do we understand what's happening to the human body? The human body is a complex body, just like the others. Um, and at that time, uh, we didn't have, science wasn't developed well enough for us to understand as to how the germ, germs enter our body and then manifest themselves in symptoms and how, how we can bring about change or how we can even attribute anything that's happening in our body to something that might be entering. Cut forward, uh, move forward 60 years after that, so about 40 years ago, germ theory has developed so much that we can now, for a complex human body, understand that if you have a headache, if I give you a small white tablet, you can ingest it and in two hours you will, your headache will disappear. So you can attribute the disappearance of that headache uh, to the testing tablet that has been given to you. All of this in a very, very complex system, which is the human body, where you have nerves and muscles and blood and plasma and cells and everything else that's going on. The challenge, I think, to the climate change community is exactly this. You have a very, very complex system, yet it's really important for you to know as to how the small changes that you're making whether for purposes of donor reporting or for purposes of just knowing what is the contribution that you're making to this, to this huge uh, problem. And what, what, how can you measure that? How can you measure that given that you have a very complex system? And I think the, the thing that we're not doing well enough is that we're not borrowing enough. We're not borrowing enough from other disciplines that have have the same questions, dealt with some of the same problems, but not all, and have managed to deal with it. And so I'm going to actually leave it, leave that very provocative thought for you to think about, because I'm hoping that we have another session where we can talk then about the methods that other disciplines have used to answer exactly these kind of questions in a very complex framework. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joe. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, and, and I do think that uh, this is the first session that we had after the keynotes, and uh, it, it is getting used to what the uh, ways are of uh, interacting here, and I'm really happy with what I've seen now in this one and a half hours. Um, 
there will be sessions as well that will continue where, where Joe left you with that, with that point. Uh, for example, the one on equity and resilience will be a very interesting one that links to this one. And uh, not that I'm making any commercials here, the other sessions are very interesting as well. And with that, I would like to uh, let you think about your body because I became very aware of it with, with Joe's story, both about climate change adaptation and ME and about my body when the story was going on. And I think we can all use some food, some lunch to put in there. Um, so enjoy that. Uh, but I wanted to ask you to uh, fill out the evaluation of this session that everyone got on their table and uh, leave it with the gentlemen of ladies at the door. And if you have the little cards, if you came to conclusions, please give them to me here at the front. It would be very nice. And I got a last question from the organization that was, did anyone take someone else's bag, this evaluation complete bag, and if that is so, then in your bag you will find an orange folder that's not yours. And if you would find it, please bring it to me. Um, apart from that, I would like to thank you for all your interaction in this, in this session. And I hope that the discussion will continue outside uh, with a nice place of, uh, of lunch. Thank you very much. Thank you.